Hi, welcome to my channel Cloud with Girish. In this video, I'm going to show you how to log a user to DynamoDB table when they sign up using Cognito user pool. While Cognito maintains all users in the user pool, there may be use case for the business to maintain users in a table for cross-reference validation and reporting. In order to accomplish this function, I will be using Cognito user pool trigger functionality. I will add a post signup trigger which will invoke a lambda function once a user has been confirmed after the signup. This lambda function will retrieve the user from the Cognito event and will store the user info in a DynamoDB table. Few points about creating a Cognito user pool. We will provide a user pool name, password policy, username attributes, schema, um, email configuration, um, which is either Cognito or SES, and also we'll select the MFA, the multi-factor uh, auth uh, options. Once user pool has been created, we'll create a user pool client, we'll provide a client name, reference user pool ID, auth flow, callback URL, and identity provider, which is Cognito. Few AWS services that I'm using for this workshop are AWS Cognito to log Cognito users. Uh, I'm using AWS Lambda function, AWS CloudWatch, and AWS DynamoDB table. Let's look at the architecture pattern. I have uh, two architecture design here. In the first design, uh, I have a user that's using a hosted UI for the signup. Once user is added, I'm confirming the user and that confirmation will trigger a post signup trigger, which will then invoke a Lambda function. And Lambda function has the code to store the user info in Python dictionary and in a CloudWatch log. The second use case here is very similar with the exception that uh, same user info is being stored in a DynamoDB table as opposed to CloudWatch log. Again, this is the summary use case. The workshop is focusing on how to log a user to DynamoDB table when they sign up using Cognito user pool. Cognito maintain all users in the user pool, but there may be use case for the business to maintain user in a table for cross-reference, validation, and reporting. In order to accomplish this function, I'm using Cognito user pool trigger functionality. I will add a post signup trigger, which will invoke a Lambda function once a user has been confirmed. The Lambda function will retrieve the user from the Cognito event and will store the info in a DynamoDB table. There are a few prereqs for this workshop. Uh, one is to have a DynamoDB table to store the user info. Another one is to have Lambda function to log the user either in the CloudWatch log or in a DynamoDB table. I already have a DynamoDB table created. If you want to learn about creating DynamoDB table using AWS SAM and AWS CloudFormation, please watch my video on this workshop. Link is in the description. I also have two Lambda functions created which will be used to log Cognito user info in a CloudWatch log and in a DynamoDB table. If you want to learn about creating and testing Lambda function, Please watch my video on Lambda workshop. Link is in the description for this as well. For this workshop, I'm going to use AWS console to create a Cognito user pool. I will create a post signup trigger and add Lambda function as trigger event. I will then create a user using the hosted UI provided by AWS for Cognito user pool. Once user is confirmed, Post confirmation trigger invoke the assign lambda function and user info will be logged. Let's get started. We will review the DynamoDB table, we'll review the lambda functions, create a Cognito user pool, create a user pool client, add post signup trigger, sign up a user using hosted UI, and then confirm the user using AWS console. Cognito user pool UI, and then we'll review the logged user info. 
in CloudWatch log and or DynamoDB table. Here is a simple DynamoDB table to store user info. Primary key, partition key is user ID. Here is the first function, log cognito user dict, lambda function, uh, simple function, uh, logging the event uh, and logging the event uh, request, uh, also retrieving the user info from the user attribute uh, uh, from the event. Uh, I have a try block, um, just in case any error, I'm catching it and logging the error. Uh, I'm extracting the user name, user email and phone number from the user attribute. Once I have this information, I'm building a Python dictionary and logging it into the CloudWatch log. Second function, uh, similar design pattern, uh, extracting the event uh, from the Cognito user uh, event and, and, and actually in, uh, extracting the user attribute. And, and uh, I have the required elements as username, email, and phone. So I'm expecting it in my user attribute event. Once I have this information, I'm uh, building a JSON and putting it in a DynamoDB table. First, I need to create a Cognito user pool. Uh, let's log into AWS console and search for Cognito service. Uh, this is how your screen should look like. Once you have Cognito service up, click on create user pool. Click on configure sign-in experience. Uh, please note that this sign-in experience cannot be changed once created. I'm going to keep it simple and choose username. You can select multiple options here. You can select username and email or username, email, phone number. I'm just gonna select username here. I will then select default password policy. You can, um, you can design your own custom policy, but I'm gonna use Cognito default. It's uh, eight, Character password minimum length, one character, one number, one uppercase, one lowercase, special character. Pretty safe. Um, I will then select no MFA. Uh, I do not recommend this option for prod use case, but here for this workshop, I'm just selecting as no MFA. I'm going to use the default uh, option for self service account recovery. I will enable the self-service uh, registration option here. I'm gonna select the required uh, attributes. Uh, by default, uh, it's not selecting any attribute, uh, but from the dropdown, I'm selecting the name and phone number. The email was already selected in the uh, prior option. Uh, I'm gonna leave all other options default. Next, I'm gonna select message delivery uh, i have two options either i can configure amazon ses uh, which is another email service or i can use the uh, send email with cognito in this workshop i'm going to use send email with cognito next i'm going to select user pool name and if you want hosted ui i of course want a hosted ui this is a ui that uh, aws uh, provide uh, to test the creation uh, sign up of the user and also uh, a simple login functionality. I'm going to select a domain. Uh, I'm going to use a Cognito domain and I'm going to just use Cloud with Grish. I'm going to then provide an app client name. Uh, I'm just providing GB user pool client. I'm providing a callback URL, which is grishbatia.tag. I'm gonna configure the advanced app client setting. Mostly I'm gonna leave it as, as default options. I'm gonna select the identity provider as Cognito user pool. And then in the OAuth uh, grant type, I'm gonna select implicit grant. Next, uh, it will provide an option to, to review all the information that I have selected so far. It will be a couple of screens of info. So let's review it. 
and once everything looks good to you click on create user pool user pool has been created as you can see if you click on user pool property you will see there is no trigger assign let's add a lambda trigger for sign up post confirmation trigger so i'm going to go on the trigger screen select sign up select post confirmation trigger and in the next uh, screen i'm going to select the lambda function from the drop down for the first use case i'm selecting log cognito user dict function from the user pool app integration i'm going to scroll down and select app client my app client is gb user pool client i'm going to select the hosted ui and click on view hosted ui it will open a window in a browser and it will give me the option to either sign in or sign up since i don't really have a user in my user pool yet i'm going to sign up as a new user once i click on sign up i'm going to get an option to confirm my account i'm going to confirm the user using the user pool interface um so let's go back to your user pool select your user and from the action menu i'm gonna say confirm account once account has been confirmed you will see the status confirmation status as confirmed and at this point the lambda function also has been invoked because it was tied with our confirmation in the post sign up event so to confirm that function was indeed uh, invoke let's go to the cloudwatch log and and review it as you can see in my cloudwatch log the user that i created the test user with the sample uh, uh, number and and uh, email that had been logged in my uh, cloudwatch to log confirm that lambda function was invoked and user info was logged in the cloudwatch log next let's update the post confirmation trigger and assign another lambda function that will log user info to dynamodb table that is our second lambda function i'm simply removing the uh, assignment of the prior lambda function and this time i'm selecting log cognito user db then i'm gonna save the changes let's go back to the hosted ui sign up uh, with a new account a similar uh, pattern i'm providing a username name phone number email uh, password and then i'm going to confirm the account using the user pool interface using the uh, action menu and my account will be confirmed as soon as account is confirmed the trigger will happen and this time my function that is assigned to this trigger is logging the info in a dynamodb table so the log confirms that lambda function was invoked and user info was logged in the dynamodb table let's just go back to the dynamodb table and confirm it left view is the original view as you can see there is no record in it and the second view here is after the function was invoked and my user info has been successfully logged in this dynamodb table with this workshop a cognito user pool has been created and a post sign up trigger was assigned a lambda function to log the user info this user info now can be used for other business use cases or reporting need in one of the upcoming workshops i will be creating this entire solution using infrastructure as code via AWS SAM and cloud formation. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm working on some other interesting content on various AWS topics. These will be posted soon. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.